Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan Makes Sense, where we talk personal finance, investing, and chart analysis. Today we are looking at ticker symbol SNOW. This is Snowflake Incorporated. We're gonna go ahead and see what institutions and hedge funds are doing. We're gonna run my stock price projection calculator. We'll do some advanced charting as well on Think or Swim. I think I've charted this one before. I have not. So uh, we'll go ahead and see where we can find support and resistance. We'll also see if we can find a bottom. Uh, just high level context. I, I have reviewed Snowflake before, uh, potentially on this channel or for a, someone else as a request. Uh, it was not looking good, but um, I did take a little peek down below before I started recording. And it looks like this company has really kind of turned around in terms of their financial metrics. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and jump on in and review Snowflake. So uh, if you know me and you know my channel, you know I look at the bigger picture and go from there really. So a uh, couple things here that I noticed with Snowflake. Um, number one, we have some pretty clear and obvious uh, signs of support and resistance. The stock has never ever broken above this line here and let me resize my head okay all right so the stock has never gone above this and the stock has also never gone below here and the below here is 111 dollars and 34 cents so this is our max range to look at uh, so now what we do again, we're going to refine a little bit more with our charting. Uh, right. Let's bring this all the way down. That's good right there. So uh, what I did, I went to the all the highest point in time, which let me see if I can get, okay. So right there, the highest point in time, you can see perfect resistance with this green candle here. You guys can see that, right? Uh, then the next month, the candle went up and retested this line. Perfect support, perfect support, fell through, test this resistance. Uh, then you can see right here, this candle broke through. This is where, if you look at this candle right here, this month volume, you can see traders really thought this was going to be the breakout, the start of a breakout. So we have this big candle, another green candle, a doji candle, kind of an indecisiveness. Goes, peaks up to 236 and now is trading at 119. Um, and let's just do a little bit more charting because this is going to help us okay so i just drew this uh downward sloping line essentially we have perfect support perfect support perfect support uh if the stock continue to falls maybe it gets to 25 dollars. i highly doubt it um but again just kind of keeping supports and resistances where possible uh, again, just going to kind of refine here. So the stock has, again, never, after late 2021, the stock has never broken this line right here as well. So it's kind of building pressure. It's getting in tighter and tighter confines. And you can see this area right here is our area of opportunity where we have our support this line right here, and then our resistance, this slope line right here, where the stock is gonna have to make a decision to move up or down. Um, I'm just trying to find potential, again, supports and resistances that we can look at as uh, viable. So um, some basic charting there for the advanced chart we'll look at fibonacci arcs that will give us a better picture of um, potentially finding the bottom but for now some technicals we do have the strength at a 36 which is with the bears this macd momentum is 
looks like it's going to go down. So I think Snowflake is actually going to go from 119 to possibly lower. The money flow, uh, you can see it was trending all time high, dip, all time high, dip, question mark, all time high, question mark. I don't know. Uh, relative momentum indicator, kind of getting ready to go to the bottom of the ocean again. Um, institutions own 59%. That is older data. New data, we'll take a peek after I run my calculation to see if uh, institutions are buying or selling. Uh, just really quickly, the sales here are immaculate. This is a huge huge improvement for the company however the earnings per share does continue to go down uh, you can see the loss is narrowing so it went from negative 2.26 to negative 2.25 that's a difference of negative 0.24 then 2024 this is the trailing 12 months again so 2024 could be better we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll take a peek uh, so it went from negative 2.5 to negative 2.55 now it could go to negative 2.6 to new negative 2.7. We'll look at the trend down below, see if the company is making improvements. Uh, but before we do that, we'll go ahead and open up our uh, proprietary uh, calculator here. All right, so we've got our proprietary stock price projection calculator here. Uh, everything is zeroed out. We do have a market cap of 40 billion, 100 million. Good for them. All right, income is not, they're not profitable. Just a heads up. I didn't really review all these financial metrics. Maybe I should do that really quick. Uh, and their sales are 3 billion, 10 million. Okay, uh, really quickly before I go on down, let's just take a review of their metrics here. Um, this company used to be in worse shape than it is now. So they're actually doing better overall. The thing that happened is there was a big price dislocation in the stock market this thing ipo'd at like gosh what did it ipo at uh 245 went all the way to four five let's see 434 and uh investors slash traders have kind of gotten this wrong um when i ran my calc this calculation early on this stock was around the 100 dollars stock price um Similar with Teladoc, when Teladoc was exploding, I was saying it was a single digit stock and I got a lot of hate, but that's exactly where it is today. So um, I'm not saying my calculation is accurate to the point, but it does give us a good viewpoint into where the stock price could be going. Uh, the stock is still very expensive. Look at the forward PE of 121. Uh, quick ratio, this is solid. So they, if they close their doors tomorrow, they could pay off any debts, loans, notes, etc. Very low debt, good for them. Income, they're not profitable. We'll go down and see if they're actually heading towards profitability because I believe they are. I'm actually quite excited for them. Uh, EPS this year negative. Past five years, EPS is negative 31%. Sales 101%, fantastic. EPS past five years, I mean, it's really going to turn a corner, and I personally want to be there when the inflection point happens. Uh, we don't know if 2024 is the inflection point or if it's beyond. So, again, we'll do our best to discover that. Gross margin, 66%. That is absolutely incredible. Uh, that is beyond high growth company. Institutions on 59%. We do have this tab right here that shows us if institutions or hedge funds have been adding or selling. Uh, insiders are selling interesting uh there is some short activity uh finviz recommends a stock at a 1.8 that's decent again they're not profitable so uh let's and then get shares outstanding they continue to add shares to the pool you could see in 2020 they had 276 million shares available fast forward 2024 they have 334 million shares available not ideal if you're trying to buy into a company and they keep uh, increasing the supply uh, the demand is diminishing, as we can see uh, throughout the stock price. Uh, and the EPS, we don't know if this is an inflection point, maybe 2024, or if this is going to continue downward. We'll do our best to take a peek. So we're going to go down here. Uh, before I continue on with my stock price projection, let's see. Q1 of 2024, they did $774 million. That's almost a $200 million increase from Q1 2023. Q2 2024, $828 million. Over $200 million increase from 
Q2 2023. So that's absolutely fantastic. Profitability is gross profit is going up. Sorry, gross profit. Um, so that's good to note. Also, I'm I'm also seeing that they're spending a little bit more money, whether that's marketing, sales, salaries, bonuses, whatever. They're spending a little bit more money, but it's paying off because they're making a bit more money. So uh for reference, Q1 they spent 253 million and produced 774 million in revenue. Uh, that is a $31 million increase in costs, but that increased the revenue about fifth, almost $50 million. So the bet's paying off there. Okay, their net income, uh, pretty horrible. So they're actually getting further away from profitability, unfortunately. You can see Q4, Q2 of this year, negative 316 million in net income. That is the worst by far that we can see all the way back to January of 2023. That's a bummer. Uh, EPS. What did we have up here? I'm gonna go quick scroll. I'm sorry. It was two five negative two point five five. I mean, it doesn't look like it's getting any better. Let's see. Q1, it was negative 0.63. This year is negative 0.65. Or I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, negative. Okay, so it was they 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 did better, but for Q1 of this year, but Q2 of this year they did worse. Uh so yeah. Uh, EPS still looks like it's not at an inflection point. So. For me personally, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna hit the brakes and see what 2024 has in store. Wow. Okay. Uh. Wow. Wow. Fifty-seven million shares were just, or I'm sorry, four hundred sixty-nine thousand shares added to the. All these sales, the shares are just going back into the pool. The director purchased them at one thirty-one for nine million dollars. God, this person sold for fifty-seven million. Uh, the CEO. Please don't tell me you're swing trading your stock. I don't see it. That's good. Um, so we have the CEO here. How many CEOs do they have? CEO and chairman, and then... I could have swore I literally saw a CEO that was not. Frank. How many CEOs do they have? Co-founder, CFO, CRO. C. Ramaswamy is now the CEO and director. So do they get rid of the old CEO? That's what I'm presuming. Um, geez. Yeah, so no real red flags here. But honestly, if this company is really a huge bargain, we would see a lot of buys here, in my opinion. So uh, just that kind of furthers my uh, putting on the brakes a little bit. So total assets, 7.2 billion, liabilities, 2.7. So assets, dwarf liabilities, three to one, no, two to one, more than two to one. So that's fantastic. Uh, almost three to one. Uh, let's pull up my handy dandy calculator here. Stop, there we go. I'm gonna throw my wireless mouse out of so cash they have three billion five hundred thirty one million three hundred fifty thousand. Good for them. Debt, not that much two hundred forty seven million five hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, other items I just want to note here: debt is going down. They're doing a good job of paying down the debt overall since Q three of last year to current. Um, liabilities going down. Well, let's see, 2.2, 7.7, So there is some price association with between the assets and liabilities. Um, about a $4 billion buffer between assets and liabilities, which is fine. Once liabilities overtake assets, that's when we get a little bit concerned, but uh, at the moment, not really. So this is all looking good. Now we're going to take this and divide it by our 
shares outstanding of 334 million 450 thousand that gives us a stock potential stock price of 135 and right now it's at 119 i i mean that's good it indicates that there's potentially some bounce in the stock but i mean honestly if we're just being frank here look at this like it's there's no no reason to potentially purchase at the moment um and then i wanted to see also sorry i'm going down uh, i wanted to see if they're improving on margins so gross margin six 65 67 67 65 they're just hanging around actually not nothing really uh cataclysmic cataclysmic so uh all right um so institutions own 59 percent i'm gonna say it's probably higher they're probably buying the dip now uh, and i say that because there's a potential rates are going down in september uh the stock is almost near its all-time low um the company's actually the sales are doing very well however they're adding to the supply and the eps has really not bottom so 59 percent is what they used to own and the updated number is 66 percent so a seven percent increase and the big boys and girls uh altimeter capital sold about 2.5 million shares vanguard purchased about 3.2 million shares 18 percent increase for vanguard uh that was earlier this year so they are taking it on the chin just a little bit um i don't see blackrock as a big player which i want to see i want to see if uh blackrock okay uh it's in there. They have their their. It, they have it in their funds. Here we go. So BlackRock owns sixteen million shares as of May this year. So they are a big owner. Um. I can't tell right here. What's this column? Let's see. So it looks like they increased their position, but they're. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the yeah, they increased their position, but the value went down because the stock's been down. Okay, so uh overall snowflake so far. Um, I'm on the sidelines, but it's pretty darn close to all-time lows. This is gonna let us know if we've hit all-time low 429 to 110.27. pretty dang close uh okay i think you know what actually i just realized something so when the stock leaves a fibonacci arc here like right here um typically one of two things happens uh one it is ready to make a move which i don't think this is really uh or two it's really ready to just kind of fall um but looking here what we can see look at this perfect support almost perfect resistance perfect resistance look at this candle right here kisses the top and the bottom perfect not perfect resistance but it tests it this is perfect support almost perfect resistance tests tests it here like almost to the t resistance perfect resistance on the inner candle and it touches this inner candle here I mean, this candle right here, a gold medal, because, I mean, it touches the outer, the middle, and the inner ring. And then we see over here, perfect resistance, candle kiss, perfect uh, candle close resistance, perfect support, um, almost test, almost test right here. And we can see this last candle, right, it closed right here. So now what we can do is see, um, I mean, this thing isn't. I don't think it's ready for a bottom, but we'll see right here, 110.27 to here. What's the high? 237.72. Okay, I'm just going to have to go in and change. 
237.72, and this is 110.27. All right. Perfect. Okay. Uh, perfect support. Test it nicely. Perfect kiss on the candle right there. Perfect resistance. Perfect resistance. Perfect resistance. Perfect support. Um, over here. Perfect right on it. And this candle, perfect. So I think we see uh, Snowflake get to 96 or 100. Uh, if it continues in this downward Fibonacci cycle, um, I mean, obviously we want to see it, maybe touch it and then work its way up. But I just don't know if we're there yet. And I say that only because this EPS is still continuing to dwindle down, unfortunately. So, again, EPS, we do have uh, earnings coming out in just a week, a couple weeks. So, we'll see what happens here, uh, honestly. But this is a wait and see for me. Um, they're on track to, again, sales are just going to crush it, it looks like. But the earnings per share is just going to continue to go down. If they continue to add more shares to the supply, it's just a... It's just a wait and see for me, honestly. There's really no candle on the month. I mean, there's just no real clear signs of a reversal. No CEO, CEO purchases. Institutional ownership and hedge fund ownership went up a little, but overall, uh, we're going to wait for this one. I think this becomes a deal sometime soon. I mean, look at the forward PE. This is overinflated by 10 almost. We like our sweet spot number to be around 15 forward PE or PE of 15 here. And then this forward PE be 15 or lower. So this is trading at almost 10, almost 10 of what we would want, maybe eight. So uh, sitting on the sidelines, waiting this one out. Uh, let's let this MACD come down and, you know, create a bottom and a consolidation for me personally. If you're someone who's going to be in this one for years or decades, I mean, taking little bites here and there, you really never know. They could release earnings and maybe they're being bought out by a company or they're buying a company. They, they announce a huge buyback program. You really never know with earnings. So if you're in this one, good luck. Um, they will make it. I mean, look at this. They're making $3 billion a year. They just need to be a little bit more disciplined with the EPS and they need to stop putting shares out there. And then insiders really need to stop selling uh basically the stock i think the stock has to go lower to the point where insiders feel stupid for selling and they would feel it makes more sense to buy it than sell it so that's just my opinion let me know what you think consider subscribing leave a comment thumbs up thumbs down have a great week goodbye